Hello. Today is the final one of our thoughts about events in the early ministry of Jesus. And we're thinking about teaching Nicodemus today. And as we come to the last of our series, looking at these events, I'd like to recap the earlier four and add a bit about the numbers of people involved and their situations. The first was temptations, Jesus' temptations when he was totally alone. Secondly, he called his first disciples and a small number of people were involved unexpectedly. Thirdly, Jesus began to preach and a congregation, a larger number of people, was also involved unexpectedly. The fourth day of considerations, the wedding at Cana. Many, many people were involved, but again, unexpectedly. Today, teaching Nicodemus, one man was involved and he actively sought out Jesus. This passage, John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21, is the longest of the passages we've been looking at, and you might like to read through the whole of it at your leisure. We'll just be picking out some specific key verses and two short sections later in John's Gospel. But first of all, some background. Jesus is dealing here with Nicodemus, a serious and thinking man who is a Pharisee. This means he was not a priest, but a layman, and also a member of a Jewish party that believed in resurrection, angels and spirits, and in following the legal traditions of the fathers rather than the scriptures. They knew about legal matters. He was also a member of the Sanhedrin or the Jewish ruling council in Jerusalem. The Pharisees aimed to separate themselves from any type of impurity prescribed in their strict interpretation of Levitical law. Ceremonial cleaning or cleansing was important to them. And indeed, Jesus chastises them for legalistic minutiae of the law while neglecting more important matters, justice, mercy, faithfulness, for example. So, a reading, Matthew 23, verses 22 to 24. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. So the Pharisees were sincere, but misguided. Nicodemus had obviously begun to question some of his long held opinions and wanted to get things clarified by speaking with Jesus in private. Okay, let's see this encounter as it unfolds. John 3 verses 1 to 16. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, 
No one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. And the third reading from John 3, verses 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his, world, his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not, believe, stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Jesus demonstrates here what he shows in every encounter he has with any individual. He is totally knowing and understanding of where the person is coming from and personalizes his reply and comments to each person. What Jesus said to Nicodemus at this point may have puzzled him, but he must have gone away and pondered deeply over it for a later period. We hear about Nicodemus again in John chapter 7, speaking a calming word of common sense into a potentially inflammatory situation. John chapter 7, verses 50 and 51. Nicodemus who had gone to Jesus earlier, and who was one of their own number, asked, Does our law condemn a man without first hearing him to find out what he has been doing? And the third and final appearance of Nicodemus is immediately after Jesus' crucifixion and death from John chapter 19, verses 38 to 40. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes about 35 kilograms. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. So finally, we have an open and public show by Nicodemus of his opinion of Jesus. And not only that, but the huge amount of balm he provided was enough for a royal burial. And here's one final thing you might like to ponder. Some things we find puzzling about our faith take a long time before they fall into place and we see things more clearly. It really is worthwhile to ponder and pray about such things. Oh, what a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. 
and knows our every weakness and the burdens that we bear. Oh, what a joy, what a privilege and mercy to carry everything to Him in prayer. Jesus, we come, our defenses are undone, and we lay our fragile prayers before your throne. Jesus, we trust in your never failing love, knowing safe within your grace we find our home. We find our home. strength within the struggle, peace within the trouble, and hope in our despair. And when we are lost, or fading in our courage, He will raise us up and hide us with Him there. So Jesus, we come our defenses are undone and we lay our fragile prayers before your throne and jesus we trust in your never failing love knowing safe within your grace we find our home we find our home we come our defenses are undone and we lay our fragile prayers before your throne and Jesus we trust in your never failing love knowing safe within your grace we find our home we find our home